What is going on guys? Welcome back to the algorithms and data structures tutorial series. Today we're going to talk about the last sorting algorithm of this series and it is widely considered to be the best, the most efficient sorting algorithm, which is quicksort. Um, and if you go on Google and type what's the most efficient sorting algorithm, what's the best sorting algorithm, you'll probably get the answer quicksort. And if you get another answer like TimSort or something like that, it's basically just an algorithm combining quicksort uh, with other algorithms for these uh, edge cases where quicksort doesn't have such a good runtime complexity. Uh, so we're going to talk about quicksort in this video. Let's get right into it. So let us talk about the basic idea behind quicksort. And this idea is that we work with so called pivot elements. So we have a list here, something like three, one, six, seven, two, eight, uh, four, five something like that. And what we do then is we pick a so called pivot element, usually the first one or the last one. Uh, it has to be a specific one, right? Like always the last one, for example, and we pick this pivot element and arrange all the other elements, so that they're um, so that the larger elements are on the right side, and the smaller elements are on the left side. So in this case, it would be uh, three, one, two, four, five, six, seven, eight. Notice that the order of these numbers stays the same. So three, one, two, and four are still in the same order, even though um, six, seven, and eight are shifted to the right. Uh, the order of the individual elements stays the same. The only thing that we change is the five. Uh, so the five has to be before all the values that are larger and after all the values that are smaller, but we don't change uh, any order uh, we don't change the order of these sublists left or right. This is also called a stable sorting algorithm if we maintain the order. So what we have in this case is we have this element and it's already in the right place. So since all the larger elements are to its right and all the smaller elements are to its left, it's already in the right place. So what we do then is we divide in order to conquer later on. So we split up into two lists here. And these two lists are three, one, two, four, and six, seven, eight. And now we recursively repeat the process. So what we do is we pick the same pivot element here, the last one, and we arrange all these, um, all these elements. Now, in this case, it's easy because it's already the case. So we have three, one, two, and six, seven are already where they belong. Uh, and then we do the same thing. If there were elements on the right, we would again split into two lists. This time we only have them to the left. Uh, which was not on purpose. I just made the list up while making this video here. So uh, we split into this list and into this list, pick again a pivot element, this two here, uh, this seven here, and then we repeat the same process. So in this case, it would be one, two, three, in this case, six, seven. And then we uh, split again. So this is still the pivot element, this is still the pivot element. And then we split up into two lists. This is what we always do. So we have uh, the list of one, the list of three, the list of six here. And these are the elements. And if you look at it, uh, we now have the complete list sorted. We have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. And this is already conquered. It's we don't have to merge it in the in the same way that we do it for merge sort. Uh, we just have to split them up in the right uh, manner and we end up with a sorted list. So every time we use the pivot element to, uh, to arrange the elements in the right order, um, relative to the pivot element, then we split into two lists if necessary. So if, if this here was not six, seven, eight, but six, eight, seven, we would split into six uh, and seven into separate lists. Same way if this wasn't the four here, but uh, eight, two, and this was the four, we would uh, put the two in the middle and split into two lists again. Um, and we would then end up with a sorted list as well. So this is what quicksort basically does. Now, when it comes to the runtime complexity of the quicksort algorithm, this might be a little bit confusing because you can actually end up with quadratic time, which might be confusing because we're talking about divide and conquer. We're talking about the most efficient algorithm. So how can it be that it ends up with quadratic time? Now, usually it does not end up with quadratic time. This is just the case in the edge cases. 
Uh, usually you have a pseudo linear time as well, so n log n. Uh, and at the same time, also with smaller constants, if you were to analyze it um, exactly the, the pseudocode, you would end up with smaller constants than merge sort on an average case. Uh, but the problem is that sometimes in edge cases, you'll end up with quadratic time. And we're going to talk about that in a second. But first of all, let's look at the runtime complexity in general. Now, what we do is we pick a pivot element, which is possible in constant time. And then we arrange all the elements um, relative to that pivot element. So what we do here is we arrange them, we compare them, which is possible in linear time, obviously. So we do this in linear time in n in, in big O of n, this is possible. And now usually what we do is we split the problem size, we split it again, we split it again. Uh, and we can say that this is possible in somewhat similar to logarithmic time on average. Because again, we have the amount of levels, this is how many time we need to do this linear process, because again, we have uh, smaller problem sizes, but more problems and so on. So usually you could say you end up with log n times uh, a linear operation. But the problem is that there are certain edge cases in which this is not the case. For example, let's say we have um, a list that looks like that. We have seven, five, three, two, one or something. This is the list that you want to sort. And the pivot element is always the right one. So what we do here in this case is um, we pick this pivot element and essentially we already lost because what we do here is we arrange everything according to this pivot element. So we have one, seven, five, three, two. This is the pivot element. So everything's on the right and we split the list only on the right side. So we have seven, five, three, two. What we do now is we pick, this one is a pivot element. Oh, it's again, the minimum value. So it's two, seven, five, three. Okay. So what we do next is we split it up again. And you can see where this goes because the pivot element is always the minimum value. So we don't really split, but we only remove one element, which is obviously uh, quadratic because this has to be done n times and n times n times is um, quadratic time. Now, this is just the edge case. This is only the case if we have elements that are, if our pivot element is always the maximum or the minimum value or um, at least most of the time, the maximum or minimum value, because the moment that we pick an element as a pivot element, which is an edge case, which is uh, an outlier, which is the maximum or the minimum and extreme value. Uh, the moment we do that, we essentially don't split the list. We have the same list with one element less. And if we always just remove one element, you have a linear runtime complexity. Uh, however, if you have a random list, the chances are um, that you're probably not going to have these extreme values as your, um, as your pivot element, you're usually going to have something that ends up kind of in the middle if you have a large random list. So the amount of levels that you're going to have will usually be logarithmic. So even though the worst case runtime complexity uh, is n squared, which might be confusing, um, the average case runtime complexity is n log n, which is pseudo linear. And it's more efficient than merge sort because the constants that we usually don't care about when we describe asymptotic growth, but still the constants that make a difference in practical programming are smaller when it comes to quick sort. So this is definitely something that you prefer over merge sort. Now, last but not least, before we end this video, I want to mention that there are some hybrid sorting algorithms like Tim sort, for example, that combine sorting algorithms, and they can be considered more efficient than quick sort. For example, Tim sort is actually used by Python. So in Python, if you use the sort function, so if you have a list and you sort it with Python, uh, you're using Tim sort and Tim sort is essentially a hybrid, a combination of quick sort uh, and insertion sort. So what it usually does is it sorts with um, with quick sort. And once it notices that it, um, it has to deal with an edge case, for example, these edge cases that we talked about, like uh, the pivot element I choose is always um, the maximum minimum value. Uh, once it's, it, it's noticing that this is the case, it switches to insertion sort because insertion sort is more efficient in dealing with these edge cases. So we prefer the quadratic runtime of insert, insertion sort. Um, we prefer it over the runtime, uh, over the quadratic runtime that we have in quick sort when we deal with these edge cases. But usually we use the um, pseudo linear n log n runtime in order to, sorry, <laughs> in order to sort 
the list. So if you get an ordinary list, you just sort it with quick sort. But once you notice, okay, this is an edge case where the pivot element is always the maximum minimum, uh, or something that would end up in a quadratic runtime complexity, when we use quick sort, we switch to insertion sort to make things more efficient, because insertion sort is just faster in these edge cases, usually not, but in these edge cases, in these very rare edge cases, it is. So uh, there are also combinations like Tim sort, I just wanted you to know that. So that's it for today's video. I hope you enjoyed it. And I hope you learned something. We're now finished with the sorting algorithms. And unless I come up with another topic that I want to fit in, uh, before I go into the next topic, we're going to continue with graph theory, because we're going to talk about basic graph theory in general first, and then going into search algorithms like breadth first search, uh, depth first search, cross call or uh, Dijkstra and all that. Um, so we're going to get into, uh, into those topics next. We're now finished with the sorting. We're now finished with merge sort, quick sort, divide and conquer, uh, sorting algorithms, and also the primitive sorting algorithms. And I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, if you have enjoyed it, uh, let me know by hitting the like button, leaving a comment in the comment section down below. And of course, subscribing to this channel to see more future videos for free. Other than that, thank you very much for watching. See you in the next video and bye.